This is the latest evolution of the CRP919 series with our CRP919E BT with the Bluetooth dongle. So no more cords running off of this. It's 100% wireless, charge it up and go. Does come with a little charger and a user manual and also comes with a blow molded case. So what we're gonna do is hook this up to the 2024 ZR2 uh, Silverado with the 3.0 Duramax diesel. And we're gonna go ahead and look inside to see what kind of data shows up in there. I also did a little test on the Bonneville salt flats with this, where I was reading how much DEF fluid was being injected in the system. So that's kind of neat. We're gonna go into that later, but for now, let's just go into the features of the CRP919E BT and hook this up. We will be plugging into our OBD port right here. I actually have a Banks iDash connected, so we're gonna disconnect that for now. We'll go ahead and just plug this in like so. Unit power is on. We'll go to the key, press the button, power it on. We're gonna go ahead and close this door so we don't get the bings, but before we do, we're gonna turn off the lights like so. All right, so here's our opening screen. You can see just the basics, intelligent diagnose, local diagnose, software update. That's a big thing you need to set this up with your username, password, and set it up to Wi-Fi so you could do all of the updates. We are 100% up to date. We are in a 24 Silverado 1500. So that's the most current truck available from the Chevrolet Silverado 1500 line. So this should work with it, right? And it does. So we're just gonna go ahead and go into local diagnose. And this is going to allow us to choose which manufacturer we have that we're working on. And you could see there are a lot available. So in my case, I would just click American because that's typically all that I deal with. And this is an American truck, but Chevrolet is gonna be what we go with. And it gives you the rundown of basically what it can do, what kind of special functions are in there, but we're gonna go ahead and just continue on so we can get into the data of this truck. And I am wearing gloves, but I'm kind of showing that it does work with wearing gloves, which a lot of screens, touch screens, have a hard time with that. So I did select manually select Chevrolet and it shows up to a 25, but we're selecting the 24. You can see all the options in there of what we're working with. And I'm gonna go Silverado. This is a D. System scan will just give a full scan of what your vehicle is equipped with. It's not gonna give you any further data than that. It's just gonna tell you all the modules that are in there. Health report will do a full system scan and tell you what is wrong in any of those modules. So we'll go ahead and do a health report. We'll see how long this takes. I'll keep blabbering as it goes. Now, as you can see, the vehicle is running at this time because I wanted to come inside the truck and do this video with the AC on. And also we'll have it running so we can have the data. Now you can scan for codes either running or not running. And I showed obviously in the beginning to just turn the key on. And one note was I did turn off the headlights that'll keep uh, the battery from being drained for something as simple as the lights still being on. Looks like we got a couple codes in there. I don't think they're going to be that big of a deal because they're, they haven't caused any issues within the truck itself. And I prefer to leave things alone if I'm not having actual issues, but we'll see what this pulls up. Cause I think uh, at least three modules have shown a code as I've been watching this and this has been going in real time. So this isn't sped up or anything of the sort. It's a pretty quick system scan for sure. All right, now this is gonna tell us all of our codes that we have. We have a security hardware, side view camera, uh, side view camera, left and right. Those might be from when I had tow mirrors installed and they didn't have cameras hooked up. I'm not totally sure, but you could see this went deep. We have a lot of little codes left in there. And like I said, I haven't had any issues with the truck at all, so I'm not going to pursue any of these. They may have just set at some point in time. Um, as they got some misread data, but we want to basically stick with whatever the concern is. So if your vehicle has an issue, you want to go in here and see what else could be on that circuit causing that. Now this truck doesn't have an issue, so we're not going to do anything. Now I can click report and it'll go ahead and create a little uh, sheet that you can save or print. And that'll tell you all of the above, which I do not have that set up. So I'm not going to do that. All right, so common functions are just gonna be common functions, but we're gonna go ahead and go into system selection. And you can see we can get into the engine control module, chassis control module, transmission control module, T case. I just accidentally hit 
that module. But let's go ahead and see what we have inside here. Let's see the special functions. So vehicle dynamic sensor offset calibration. We're not going to mess with that. Actuation test, differential lock. So since this is a ZR2, we're able to electronically lock and we're not going to play around with that. I think that's the, the module that I went into, but we're just gonna back out of this and we will go, so we got the EBCM there, power steering control module. Now, typically in my videos of the scan tools, I just go into engine control module and then I toy around in there. But like I said earlier, we've got some data from the engine control module of the DEF injector and I think that's really neat. We'll get into that in just a moment. But what I do not get into is a lot of people ask about, I mean, I'm just, I'm reading and talking at the same time. That's a lot of modules available for us to get into. A lot of people ask about the parking brake, if you could put it into service mode. And let's go ahead and go into here and see if we can do that. So we got park brake calibration right there. Automated brake bleed, I like that, but make sure you know what you're doing when you're doing that. Let's do actuation test, see if it's in there. So as you can see, we have activate rear park brake service position and deactivate rear park brake service position. So that is in there, you are able to do that. Hopefully that answers those questions for you. Now let's go ahead and go into the transmission control module because we don't ever really go in there. And uh, with this scan tool, it's really good to check that out. All right, we're going to go with the MQB transmission in this truck. Now we can go ahead and read fault codes, but from our scan earlier, we know that we don't need to read any fault codes. So we're just gonna go ahead and go into actuation test, see what we can do. We've got torque converter clutch, so you can enable these. We're not going to mess with that because we know how sensitive these transmissions are. Um, and now we can do, we can put the transmission into service fast learn, transmission service ad adaptive pressure reset. So that'll essentially reset the transmission so it'll relearn. Now, I'm not gonna mess with any of these and I don't suggest anybody does unless they have a reason to, but I'm just showing that they are there. Now we can also read the data stream. All right, let's go into transmission data. And this should give us all the data that we could possibly want. We've got 44 possibilities. I selected all and hit okay. Now, if you wanna select just a couple, you can do that and it'll keep your screen clear to where that you could just have the items right in front of you. You also have the ability to graph, which we could just hit the graph right there. And then we can rev it. That's accelerated pedal. You can see it goes up and down and it's graphing as we go. So if you're on a road test and you wanna see how the torque converter clutch is reacting, you can do that with this graphing setup like that. So we got calculated line pressure, current gear, distance since code cleared. So that's interesting, 5,500 miles. I don't know what code I had 5,500 miles ago, but it did not uh, pop anything up for me. Now we have uh, driver requested axle torque. And that's an interesting one because a lot of people say that these control modules do not record how much power was through the vehicle. And if it's able to read it, then I'm telling you it's able to record it. And that may be something in the later dates as far as uh, modifications go. So just throwing that out there. I know that's not relevant to the scan tool. However, I start rambling sometimes. So you can see the basic transmission, um, all the readings that you would want to look for, I think. So I don't do too much with transmissions. So we're not going to go too deep in there. I do like engine related stuff, as do many people of the channel. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into this. As you see, this is a 24 Silverado and it does read correct engine codes. Now, it doesn't notice that it's a Silverado 1500, so that's why it shows the 6.6 .6 L8T and the L5P. But if you know your engine, we have a 3.0 LZ0. So we're gonna click that. All right, now we can I mean, we could go in and we could do, let's see here, special functions. Let's see what we've got available to us. So the learn functions, we'll start there. All the basics, engine coolant control valve learn, engine coolant flow control valve learn, and the turbo position learn. So if you replace the actuator on top of your turbocharger, you're gonna need to use 
that feature right there. If you're having issues with your coolant control valve and it's on back order like they currently are several months, you could try to do a relearn with it and try to get it to actuate and unstick. That's just a, a prayer right there, but it may work out for you. So just throwing that out there, the brake pedal position learn and the crankshaft variation learn, you will only do those when absolutely necessary. So resets, so air cleaner to monitor setup, that's if you installed an intake onto the truck and didn't reset everything, that's the way to do it. So borrow sensor engine oil life. Um, it'll tell you, so you can go into engine oil life and you could change the percentage to whatever you want. Now we're not going to mess with it, but it's current value is 48% and I can change that. I can input a different number in there if I wanted to, but no reason to at this point, just saying you, so if you reset and you're not able to do it through your dash, you could just do it like that. Fuel filter reset, same way. Now let's go into... The NOx sensor reset, if you replace your NOx sensors, you're going to have to do a reset on those also. Particulate filter, if you swap out your particulate filter for a new one, you do need a particulate filter reset. So again, this takes care of that reductant system data reset and fluid tank level reset. That's if you have a DEF module issue and you swap out the DEF tank or the module itself, you're going to need to go in there and do some resets. Now. Let's go ahead and go back and let's watch some data. Oh, before we do that, injector flow rate programming. This is when you replace a fuel injector, you're gonna have to go in there and program into uh, your new fuel injector code. Now that code is on top of the fuel injector and we're, we're running right now, so it's not gonna let us do anything and I'm not gonna change it because we need the AC on right now. Condition not satisfied, perfectly fine by me, leave it alone. Let's check out some data. Read data stream, there's quite a bit available in there. So we could do charge air boost data. In fact, we're gonna go, let's go to engine mechanical data because I wanna see oil pressure. Because on the dash, it looks like it's reading like three PSI and people freak out, but we can we can actually get a reading from this as we're idling. It's definitely up to temperature. So let's see if we can find the engine oil pressure. All right, engine oil pressure, 19.8 PSI. Give it a rev like that, jumped up 34, 33. So as you can see, it shows it's sitting at like five PSI on the dash, but it's really around 20. And this is up to temperature, it is definitely warm. Engine oil pressure control valve command. We rev it, see if that changes. It does change, so it's modulating it. And so that's our engine data that we have in there. Let's go ahead and look at our emissions data, reductant system data. All right, so once again, we will select all and go in. All right, so we can see our data in here. I just wanna go into the DEF injector flow because I did a little driving on Bonneville salt flats where I monitored the DEF injector flow rate and we'll check that out in just a second. There's our mass airflow sensor reading 15 grams per second. This is a reductant load. Reductant level sitting at 94.4. If they can read that through the ECM, why can't we get that on our dash? That's what I would like to know. All right, so there's our desired reductant injector two command, desired injector command. Now that's reading in milliseconds and that will change it. The higher the milliseconds, that's the longer that the injector is open for, which means more spray into the exhaust system. So what I did was I went out to Bonneville Salt Flats and I did a couple videos out there with fuel mileage and whatnot. Now I use the scan tool to watch how much def injector the one and two change as we drive along considering how much load, speed, acceleration. The results were pretty cool. I hope you enjoy this. Check that out. Here we go. It's actually lower, lower than it was at 40 miles an hour. We're definitely using less def at 40 miles an hour or at 55 miles an hour than we were at 40 miles an hour. I find that very interesting right now. All right, we just saw injector two come in. So it is coming in to double our reductant fluid spray. Thank you for that. And that's at 55 miles an hour. It's kind of coming and going. Let's go ahead and bring this up to 65. You can see both of them are spraying at this point in time. Let's bring us up to speed. 
definitely going with the fuel flow. We need more fuel to get it up to speed. All right, we're sitting at 65 miles an hour. This should level off. And we can see both injectors definitely spraying. Number one really does all of the work. This is the CRP919E Bluetooth, which has a Bluetooth dongle with it. Now, CRP919, we have already looked at a CRP919 in a prior video, but this one is the newest, latest, greatest generation of the Bluetooth version with a larger screen and a couple more features in there. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look inside